everybody. Um, welcome to Calvary. Thank you to everyone that came out today and everyone watching online for coming to celebrate our graduates on graduation Sunday. All right, let's pray. Thank you, God, for today. Thank you for all these amazing graduates that came out. Thank you for this awesome church that we can come to and fellowship and worship. Um, please let this message touch everyone's hearts, and let's have a good graduation Sunday. Amen. Hey, let's pray for the offering. 
Dear Lord, thank you for this great day you've given us in this great graduation Sunday. I pray that you bless the offer offering and multiply it and use it for your will. Amen.
on that blessing? Indeed. Amen. All right, so we're in the portion of our service now where we'll be honoring our graduates. And we want to say uh, what a joy it is to have this opportunity to do this and to participate in such a special day with all of you. And uh, Pastor Barry and I are going to work together with this. We've not done this before, so if it goes wrong, it's Barry's fault. <laughs> right? I mean, so we can go ahead and agree on that right up front. But I appreciate the work that he has put in and all of you too. So if our graduates would go ahead, and we're just, I guess they're going to line up here. Yeah, so if you are a high school graduate or a college graduate, and, and we want to honor you today and celebrate you today. So if you could please come on up to the stage, but just line, on, line up right over here by, this, by these steps. So go ahead, we'll wait a second for our, our graduates to come on up. Don't be shy. <laughs> there we go. Uh, j just wait a moment. Don't, don't be too hasty now. All right. So no, no, no. first Off I think we will recognize the college, or high school grads first, right? Yep, so. high school graduates first. We're going to call you up, give you your Bible, because, you know, that's what we give you. And uh, I'll hand it to you. Pastor Jeff might say a word or two to you, and then you'll come back down off the stage and, you know, line up at the front of the stage here. You I'm going to need this mic probably over there for them. They can't just lean into your mic? and. Well, they could, them. but that'll be awkward. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and get started. You having trouble there? Yep, sure. yep we're ready. All right, so we need Jacob Burroughs. Oh, I thought it was Caleb, Caleb Adams. Adams. Caleb Adams is first. I was looking at that one, and it's got the other one is first. It's backwards. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good. Congratulations on graduating. So come stand right here for a minute. So, uh, so what's next? I'm going to be going straight to work. Straight to work. Good idea. Your dad, well, your mom was hoping, too, Lucky. that you would go ahead and find a job. So that's important. <laughs> so what kind of work are you doing? I'm going to be working at an automotive shop. I got you. So mechanic work. Yes, sir. That's a good field. They make a pretty good living, too. Yeah, we do. That's awesome, man. I'm happy for you. Are you happy, too? Yeah, I'm very happy. So how did things go with high school? Are you, can I just say, are you glad it's over? Yes. Amen. I'm very glad it's over. <laughs> we share that in common. Amen. So I am happy for you, brother. Thank you for letting us honor you here today. Thank Amen. You. Guys, let's give him a quick hand. Go ahead. Walk off. Amen. You go this way. way. Yeah, go around right. and just. Go off that way. Now we need Jacob Burroughs. So Jacob, is that right? Jacob. All right. So come on, Jacob Burroughs. You get to stand here, too. For a moment, we've got to stand in front of the microphone here for a minute. All right. Okay, so are you, what's, what's next for you? I'm going to KSU. Going to KSU, yeah. So you're going to be on the track team? Uh, we'll see. We'll see, okay. <laughs> you are, you're pretty good in high school. I thought you might pursue that there too, maybe. Well, they're D1, so I, yeah. I got to do better. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but you are better. I saw, I saw some of your work, man. So did you make pretty good grades in high school? I did. I thought so. I thought so. You had the brain pan for it. I don't know if you use it all the time or not, though. Nah, not all the time. <laughs> no sense in overdoing it, is it? Nope. Amen. So do you know what you're going to study at KSU or just? Uh, not yet. That, that, that's the right answer. That's the right answer. I don't think you're supposed to know it. Sometimes they want kids to know by the eighth grade what they're going to do for the rest of their life. I'll be 58 this year, and I'm not sure yet what I want to do when I grow up either, buddy. <laughs> So, amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you for letting us honor you here today. Thank you. Appreciate you, brother. All right, so now we've got Logan Cornelius. Is that you? Is Logan here today? Nope, I don't see. Where is Emory Cup? Did Emory get to come this morning? No, okay. All right. And where is Miss Kaylee Hudgens? So, Miss Kaylee gets to come up. Who's that? Miss Kaylee, it's nice to see you again. I know. You don't want to be up here, do you? It's kind of nerve-wracking for me, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so are, what's next for you? I'm going to North Georgia for physical therapy. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Good for you. Good for you. Now, North Georgia's a good school. Mm -hmm. Did your mom make you pick that because it was closer to home? Maybe. Might have had a <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> that's a good choice. I can understand that. So did you, did you have pretty good grades in high school and everything? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I believe you did. I think you're probably the smartest one in your whole family. Yeah, right. That's what we were thinking, too. And humility. Got humility to burn, too, right? <laughs> Thank you for letting us honor you today. We're proud of you, sweet girl. Amen. And now we have Ashton Martin coming up. So come on up. Now, we're, 
Got to talk here a minute for you too, brother. <laughs> All right, so um, so the first thing I want to ask is, do you, you work at Chick-fil-A, right? Yeah. Now, listen, I go through there all the time, and you have never, ever snuck me any free food. It's true. It's true. I, and I don't know what's up with that, but that's okay. I'm you can just, you just say, well, this, this is for my preacher. Yeah. Right? So, <laughs> it's for my preacher. Yeah. I'll slide it in there. They'll, they'll help me out, right. Now, what are you doing next? I'm going to straight to work. Are you? Yeah. I hear you. Firefighter. Oh, awesome for you, man. You going to be here local or you go somewhere off for that? Probably local. I hear you. All right, man. We are so proud and we're glad you're here. Amen. I'm kidding about the free food. Let's don't get in trouble. Amen. 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 All right, so now we have Miss Sydney Patton. Hello, Miss Sydney. Okay. Got to stand in front of the microphone, I know. It's okay. I promise we won't take but just a minute. Okay. So are you done school? Are you glad school is over? Yeah. I would be too. Mm -hmm. So now, how was your grades? Pretty good? Yeah. I think they would be too. And now, and it's all right. Are you the smartest one in your family too? No. I know the rest of them. I know the rest of them pretty good, Sydney. I think you got them by a pretty good stretch. So how did, now, you were a dancer in school, right? And, and some of the different ballets and stuff like that. Are you going to pursue that going forward? Yeah, I'm dancing. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Where are you going to college at? Kennesaw. Kennesaw. Is that because they think it's close enough to home? Are you going to live on campus or stay at home? Yeah, I'm living on campus. I'm okay. Well, so where's mom and dad at with that? Let's see. We kind of, okay. That's okay? Yeah. Are you sure? All right. <laughs> we don't know yet. Amen. We are very proud of you. Thank and you. look forward to hearing about what's next for you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you for letting me have you up this morning. All right. So, Becca Pratt. Come on, Becca Pratt. So, <laughs> so I, Rebecca Pratt has been here since she was a little bitty. I, and one of my earliest memories of her was when we had those hand sanitizers everywhere. And we had them on the walls, and everybody was using them. And Rebecca might have been two or three, but she was a little bit. She was short enough to stand under one of those things and see what that looked like when the stuff came out. And it went right in her eyes. Was it both or just the one? You guys remember? I mean, because we were, I thought, well, those people will never come back to church again. Amen. But they have. Amen. Now, Rebecca, you have spent the last couple of summers volunteering up at Global, right? Are you up there this summer again? I'm going to be up there for a month this for year. A month this time. Okay. So are you going to go to college next? Where are you going to go? Georgia Southwestern. Georgia Southwestern. Where is that at? America. Georgia uh, is like America. three hours south. I hear you. Okay. I know where America is. That's pretty... A lot of gnats and a lot of heat, but it's probably, yeah, so we were, when the Lord moved me from South Georgia pastoring, I was, I just had one request, and it was, Lord, let me be above the gnat line, so, <laughs> amen, so, what are you going to major in? Uh, education. I thought so, amen, that's a good fit for you, sweet girl, good, we are proud of you, amen, thank you for letting me have you up here this morning, amen. So, for our, um. For our college graduates, you know, they, they don't get a Bible because they already got one. But we have uh, something different for you guys. It's a, it's a Paul Tripp devotional book called New Morning Mercies. Uh, I've read it myself. It's fantastic. It's amazing. 365 days a year for, yeah, the whole year. Uh, so I hope you guys read it every day and it, and it blesses your life. So That's a blessing too. Day. Amen. So we have Miss Amanda Bishop, but I don't see Miss Amanda. I think they're out of town this weekend, right? They are out of town? Okay. Then I, let me see, next we have Josie Free, or Grace Bo. Is Grace here this morning too? We will save her a book for her too. Amen. And then we do have Miss Josie Freeman. She is here. Amen. <laughs> Why? I haven't even said anything yet. <laughs> I think it's going to be okay. Okay. All right. So. Nobody believes you're actually old enough to be graduated from college. So how old are you actually? 21. Well, okay, well that's close <laughs> enough, right? So uh, Josie has a similar uh, thing with Rebecca, but Josie was on the merry-go-round with her brothers. <laughs> and remember that day? And you had on that most beautiful little dress and your brothers were out there slinging you around and they slung you off and scratched you and, and, and bruised you up every which way you could. And I was like, oh, poor people will never come back. <laughs> And, uh, but we, we saved you, and here you are, right? So, yep. so now you've got your degree in what? What did you 
Graduate biology. biology. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do with that? Um, I'm planning to go to PT school. Okay. Physical therapy. Okay. Mm -hmm. I hear you. So <laughs> that's a good field too. There's a lot of us older people who are really going to need that, right? <laughs> so that's a good field, Josie. So thank you for letting us honor you here today, and we are proud of you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Not too bad. We got you out. And then I uh, miss Michaela Fuquay. I know that they are traveling too, so we didn't get to see her this morning. And then Miss Brooke Harris. Did Brooke get to come in? I think they're traveling too. All right. And then our, I think, Brother Wesley Wyrick. Come on, Brother Wesley. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now, Wesley, what did you graduate with? Uh, supply chain management, business. Hey, that's a wide open field, too. Have you got work already lined up? Uh, no, but I'm working with the uh, UNG ah, okay. counselor and some professors. That'll work. That'll, that'll keep you. Also look for opportunities to do right now. <laughs> yeah, amen. <laughs> Anybody hiring, here's your man. Open. Amen. So, did you enjoy school, or are you sort of glad it's done? Sort of glad it's done. I can imagine that. Amen. Wesley, we appreciate you, buddy, and love you guys. Thank you. Amen. Your all family is a blessing to us. Blessing to you. Amen. 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 All right, so at this time, we would love for the parents to come and stand with your graduates, or if you're here for one of the grads and would like to come and stand with them, come and stand with them because we would like to pray over you. So, if you'd so like go ahead and maybe spread out a little bit, graduates. Yeah, that way we'll we've just got a spread bit out a little more. more. Yeah. So we have room for the families mm -hmm. to come and gather. Amen. And uh, anybody else that wants to uh, to come up and pray for one of these students or, or all of them, Be you're welcome, welcome to to come forward or stay where you, stay where you are. Uh, I know we haven't really done this much in the past, but we want to do a, a laying on of hands and praying for these graduates and their futures. Yeah. So. We'll take a second, wait for people to come up if they would like to do so. Yeah. Now we've got the families here, and if there are others that would like to come, please come. Love to have you. Have we missed anybody, high school or college graduate? Did we miss you? Would, would you please let us know? I, we certainly didn't mean to if we have. Church, would you join me standing, please, and let's just have prayer for these. Where is Pastor Harris at? Did he come up here? Pastor Harris, would you come and pray for these? And pray over these families, please, sir. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for all these graduates here, for the accomplishments, the achievements they've made. God, we're just so proud of them. And God, we're just so excited because we know that you have an amazing plan for each and every one of them. Yes. We're excited to see how you're going to use them, Father. And we pray that right now as they get ready to, to go on to the world and then to college, God, that you would just be with them, continue to strengthen their faith, continue to help yes. us as a church to, to pour into them and to love on them and to encourage them, God, in whatever pursuits they have in mind and whatever plans you have for them, God. We're just excited to see what the future has in store for them. We pray for them. We just pray that you would give them wisdom, give them strength, and just allow them to, to go out and to be a witness for you and to bring glory to you, Father. We just pray all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Let's give these a hand. Amen. Thank you, guys. Amen. All right. So at this time, uh, Pastor Barry is going to come and bring a message for us this morning. And I want to say to all the kids that are in here from Children's Church today, how much I appreciate you guys being in here and how much I appreciate y'all's attention. And I, I am very thankful. So if you will... All the kids who are here from Children's Church, would you stand up right quick? Everybody who normally goes out to Children's Church, go ahead and stand up. I want to see you. Let me see. Let's give them a hand. All right. Okay. So, all right. So, all of the kids who normally go out for Children's Church, I'm going to get Pastor Harris to do a pizza night with you guys in the coming weeks, okay, because you were so good in here today. All right. So, where you at, Pastor Harris? Th we can get that done, okay? All right, so guys, thank you so much, and listen, pray for Brother Barry as he preaches. Um, we're delighted to be able to have him here with us at Calvary and to have his opportunity this morning, so I'm praying for you, brother. Amen. All right. Hello, everybody. Good morning. My name uh, is Barry Watson. I'm the student pastor here at Calvary Baptist Church. Uh, been here for about a year now, and uh, been able to 
had the privilege of speaking to your kids and, and your students for, for this time, and, and now I'm really honored and, and have the privilege of being able to speak to you guys today about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So thank you for, for having me up here and tolerating me. Um, first off, I just want to start by saying, you know, thank you to all of our students. You guys did an awesome job. We'll go ahead and give them a round of applause. In addition to this being graduation Sunday, it's also our, our, our youth Sunday. So I don't know if you noticed, but we had a lot of younger faces at the door greeting you and coming up and taking the offering and, and praying and, and worshiping. Uh, so you guys did an amazing job. Thank you so much. They were all very nervous beforehand coming up. What do I pray? How do I, how do, I do that? What do I say? You say good morning. You know, like, that's all you got to do. Um, so yeah, thank you guys. Also, once again, congratulations to all of our graduates. Um, you know, I'm, we're, we're honored that, that you would be here and let us celebrate with you guys and, and, and honor you. So once again, this is a big milestone in your life, big accomplishment. So congratulations to all of you guys. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say a word of prayer, and, and we'll get started. So here we go. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you now, your humble servants, your sons and daughters. Lord, thank you so much for this time together. Thank you so much for Calvary, for the student group, the children's group, and, and all these adults here. Lord, right now, I pray that, that this message would be something that, that you would bless, that this wouldn't just be... Uh, the thoughts of, of me, of Barry, Lord, but these would be words that you want this congregation to hear, Lord, words that you want your people to hear. So, Father, I pray right now that your spirit would move in this place, that we would grow to love you and know you more, Lord. Again, thank you so much for this time, and it's in your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. All right, so um, the, the title of, of my sermon today is called uh, Meaning, you know, a funny story, I actually had a completely different sermon, and I changed it last night at like 3 a.m., and I sent all the notes to Taylor, and I was like, please, can you fix the slides? I'm so sorry, and she was an angel. She got it all done for me. Um, I want this sermon to be primarily directed to our graduates. You guys are dispersed throughout the crowd, so I don't know where to look exactly, but um, I want it to be primarily directed to you guys. Uh, again, this is something that... that I hope everybody can, can glean something from, but, you know, I, I wrote this in mind with you graduates in mind and, you know, the high school and college ones, and so in this special time in your life, you know, you, you're getting a bunch of gifts, having awesome graduation parties and, and ceremonies and all this stuff, I'm about to give you the best gift you could ever have, a sermon. So here we go. <laughs> so I am, uh, I'm at the ripe old age of 24. I've lived a lot of life, quite experienced, you know, and uh, in my life, I've, I've gleaned a, a good bit of wisdom, and I'm going to try to impart some of that today, um, and I remember long, long ago when I graduated college, way back in 2018, and then I remember even long ago before that, back in the stone age of 2014, when I graduated high school, I remember what that time was like in my life, and, and how... Uh, how many questions were circulating and, and expectations and, and what am I going to do next. And uh, another thing I thought about was what have I done up to this point? You know, what have I done, what have I accomplished, you know, to, to look back on and appreciate and to prepare me for the future and all this stuff. I went to a, a tiny little private Christian school, uh, Covenant Christian Academy, go Rams. Uh, and at that school, you know, we... We were very different than most other schools, you know, that we only had about 60 people in my whole high school. And so in my graduating class, there was just 15 students, uh, one of them being my, my twin sister. So it wasn't a whole lot of people there. And you might think with a graduating class that small that our graduations would, would be very fast and they wouldn't take a whole lot of time. You would be wrong to think that. <laughs> We, uh, we managed to make a list of 15 students take about a two-hour ceremony every single year. It was, it was about that long, if not longer. Because at a normal graduation ceremony, what happens is, you know, students will, will be sitting in their chairs. The, the principal will, will announce them or, or somebody, and they'll come up, grab their diploma, take the picture, and walk right off the stage. And that's it. At my graduation ceremony, though, 
it was much more than that. We would all be sitting in, in our group of just, you know, the 15 of us, and our headmaster, because it was private school, you don't call him the principal, you call him the headmaster. The headmaster would get up there, and he would, for each and every student, he would say a list of all the things that student had done while they were in high school. You know, different awards or athletic achievements, all these, these things. And this list, depending on the student, might go for, for just a few seconds or it could go for, for quite a few minutes. I remember his, uh, his eldest daughter was in my graduating class and she accomplished a lot in high school, but that he was definitely um, feeling himself that day and a little emotional and he took about 15 minutes just for her <laughs> before we moved on to the next person. Uh, the typical list, you know, we were... The way a ceremony would work is, you know, we were sat not according to alphabetical order, but according to GPA. So it was already kind of like a competition of who graduates where. And you would expect the, normally you could expect the students at the, the front and at the beginning of the, of the service, they would have quite a long list of, of accomplishments and things because not all lists were created equal, all right? With some of these students, like I said, you know, it'd be something like, um, you know, Miss Terry Hill, you know, graduating, valedictorian, you know, summa cum laude, all that stuff. Freshman year, she won this academic award. She competed in this sport, won all state here and then all state there and, and go on just for a minute or two. And then her sophomore year, and it would go on for <laughs> telling everything in the sophomore year, all the way up to senior year. And then... It also included extracurriculars of, of things outside of school, like, um, like church, you know. Oh, she went on a mission trip to Haiti, and over here she witnessed to these people and did this thing. It did so many extra things that you wouldn't expect to hear at a graduation. So that's what it would be like near the front. And then it got a little shorter and shorter as time went on. And then near the end of the service, you might hear something like Jeff Hill. He graduated. <laughs> he did it, you know. Literally, like, the discrepancies could be huge sometimes. It's just long and then just, hey, you did it. Good job. And uh, my graduation wasn't the first time for me attending one of these. Uh, my, my older brother, he graduated before me and my older sister before him. And so I'd been here a few times. And, and these lists, you know, as, as much as we wanted to act like they didn't mean a whole lot, they, they did kind of mean something to us at the time. It was, it, was, it was somewhat of a competition. And, you know, I remember being in the crowd judging the students based on their lists, where they sat and how, how much was said about them. You know, it's like, wow, this person is quite the productive person. They, they, they're given things in life and, and they make things happen. This person is, seems kind of lazy. This person really didn't do... I can kind of guess where they might go in life, you know, and that was... As wrong as that might have been to think, that was somewhat, at least, I can't speak for everybody, but that was kind of my thought. Um, my list, I remember, it wasn't, wasn't too long, wasn't too short. I didn't really care. The thing that mattered to me was I graduated just ahead of my twin sister. You know, <laughs> She blew me out of the water in college and destroyed me there, but in high school, I graduated 0 0.1 GPA ahead of her, so I got to go just before her. Like I said, all these lists seem like they meant something at the time, and they seemed so important to us. Um, you know, look what I did. I, I got this award. I, I graduated here in my class. Um, you know, but thinking about it now, you know, eons later, so long ago, those lists didn't really mean that much. It's, uh, I look at those lists, and I, I think it doesn't really impact my life today. In fact, I haven't even thought about my graduation until today. You know, it, it didn't, in the long term, it might be a nice little memory, but it, it doesn't mean a whole lot. Like, if I were to ask you guys, you know, raise your hand if you care that, you know, sophomore year I won, you know, second team All-State in soccer or something like that. Aside from, you know, maybe Trent giving me a penny, pity raise or, or Cooper trying to make fun of me, nobody's really going to raise your, their hand unless your name is Barry's mom. You're not going to care those things that I accomplished back in high school. It's not, it has, doesn't really have a whole lot of impact today, those, those different accomplishments. And so, with all that in mind, I, I, I wanted to speak to you guys about building a life 
and chasing after things that matter and have lasting impact. Because I don't want you to live your lives and then come to the end of the road and look at all the things you did just like a list of accomplishments from high school that don't mean that much anymore, all right? Like, I want your life to be more than just a list that is later forgotten, tucked away, and then eons later people forget about, okay? We need to strive for something greater than that. So if you have your Bibles, please turn with me to the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. So in this pursuit of, of meaning and trying to find something of worth and of value, I think this is perhaps the best book that we could turn to. Uh, I'm excited to, to go, through with it, go through it with you today. A um, long time ago, there was this one time that, that my dad gave me this really good advice, you know, just the one time. And he said, he said, if you want to be successful at something, you know, go talk to people who have been there and done that, who have succeeded in that area as well, and pick their brains. People who have gone through it and see what they have to say. Okay, so when we are looking at the pursuit of meaning, of trying to find something of value, perhaps the best person we could look at is King Solomon himself. Okay, we believe that, that this book was, was basically written by him. There's kind of uh, two authors behind it. There's the, the writer who, compo who took all, he says, I've, I've taken like the writings of the teacher or the preacher, depending on your version, and that teacher is Solomon. And so for 11 chapters, it's just the words of Solomon. And then in chapter 12, the, the writer of the book gives his, his closing thoughts on everything that Solomon had to say. But yeah, I think Solomon, of all people, might be the person we can turn to to, to try to find meaning and, and learn from his wisdom. Because Solomon was blessed by God with greater wisdom than anyone who had ever lived. God came to him and said, you know, what is it that you want? And Solomon said, he was king of Israel, he said, I would like wisdom to know how to rule over your people. And God was so pleased with his answer, he granted him that wisdom. And outside of Jesus Christ, he is the wisest man to have ever lived. Still made a lot of mistakes, but he is still the wisest man to have lived. Not only that, God was so pleased with his answer that he blessed him with riches beyond compare. You know, he's probably the richest man to have ever lived. So he is wise enough to know the routes to take, and he has the money to pursue those ends and see if those things bear fruit. So we're going to start in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, and I'm just going to read a, a portion of chapter 1 to you guys at the beginning. So the words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem, Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. What does man gain by all the toil at which he toils under the sun? A generation goes and a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. We're starting off at a great point here. <laughs> Something very, very upbeat and happy. He's right out the gate. You know, he's saying, there's, everything seems like a waste of time. It seems unimportant. And, and he continues on in, in verse 9, what has been is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done, and there's nothing new under the sun. Is there a thing of which it is said, see, this is new? It has been already in the ages before us. There is no remembrance of the former things, there will, there, nor will there be any remembrance of later things yet to be among those who come after. He's saying, everything in this life seems like Time catches up to it all. A generation comes and a generation go. Time marches on. And what he concludes with uh, a few other verses later in, in this chapter in this book, he ultimately says, everything is rendered meaningless because of death. All right? Nothing can last. Nothing can have an impact because eventually we're all going to die and the things that we built during our lives, the things that we sought after, the things that we, we, we created, they're going to get, they're, they're going to fade away. People are going to forget about it. So that leads me to my point, you know, death ruins everything. So King Solomon, in all his wisdom, in this book, sets out to pursue something of meaning, something of value and worth. And he says to himself, like, I am going on this mission. I will find meaning in this life. And so we're going to go on that journey with him. Um, 
So the first thing he seeks to try to find wisdom in, or try to find value in, is wisdom. He says, perhaps, you know, in the pursuit of wisdom, you know, wisdom is a good thing. I might be able to find meaning in this life. So in chapter 1, verse 16, he says, I said in my heart, I have acquired great wisdom, surpassing all who were over Jerusalem before me, and my heart has had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. And I applied my heart to know wisdom and know madness and folly. But I perceive that this also is but a striving after the wind. For in much wisdom is much vexation. And he who increases knowledge increases sorrow. He says, I sought after wisdom. I sought to, to grow my knowledge. You know, listen, kids going off to, to college. Listen, people maybe pursuing further education and uh, going on. He says, I tried to learn all that there was to know. And even there, I, I didn't find meaning because, you know, it's like that phrase, the more you know, the less you don't. I just kept finding more problems. I kept finding more issues. He continues on in chapter 2, verse 14. He says, The wise person has his eyes in his head, but the fool walks in darkness. And yet I perceive that the same event happens to all of them. Then I said in my heart, What happens to the fool will happen to me also. Why then have I been so very wise? And in my heart, that is also, and I said in my heart, that is also vanity. Why is it vain? Because he says it doesn't matter if I learn all that there is to learn. It doesn't matter if I, if I study all these different books. He says near the end of, um, near the end in chapter 12, you know, to the pursuit of wisdom and, and of writing many books, you know, there is no end. It's just wearisome. It's, it's tiresome. And ultimately, again, death ruins it. I'm going to die and all the wisdom that I gained isn't going to mean much. In fact, one day it won't mean anything. It's just going to fade away. So he sought after wisdom. That didn't have meaning in it. He moves on to the next thing. He says, perhaps I can find meaning in pleasure. You know, the things that bring me delight and happiness. And so in chapter 2, verse 1, he says, he says, I said in my heart, come now. I will test you with pleasure. Enjoy yourself. But behold, this also was vanity. And then in that first part in chapter 2, he he, he runs about and he says, I went after, after good drink. I went after good food. I went after women. I went after like building these amazing gardens and, and, and towers and all these things to see if they could bring me pleasure. I didn't keep myself from laughter, he says in, in verse 9. So I became great and surpassed all who were before me in Jerusalem. And also my wisdom remained with me. And whatever my eyes desired, I did not keep from them. I kept my heart from no pleasure for my heart. I kept my heart from no pleasure for my heart, found pleasure in all my toil, and this was my reward for my toil. Then I considered all that my hands had done and the toil I had expended in doing it, and behold, all was vanity and striving after the wind, and there was nothing to be gained under the sun. He said, I did all the things that made me happy. I chased after all these different things, and I denied myself no pleasure. He said, whatever my eyes wanted to have, I went after it, okay? And that was fun. You know, I, I like what he says in, in verse 10 where he says... Um, you know, I went after pleasure, and that was the reward. Like, the, the pleasure that I had in that moment was the reward I got for that pleasure. It didn't mean anything else outside of that. Again, because he says it's a striving after the wind. Okay, some of the, the versions that you have, you know, he, he says meaningless. Some might say vanities. The Hebrew word is havel. And what's, what that means is, is smoke. Okay, and he says it's, it, you know, it has the appearance of being solid, but when you go to grab it, it slips through your hands. It's not going to last. You can't hold on to it at all. So we went after wisdom, didn't do anything. We went after pleasure, there was no meaning to be found in pleasure. So he moves on. He says, maybe I can find meaning in my work, in my toil, you know. Again, listen here, gra high school graduates, they're heading straight to work. Lucky you, you don't have to go to college. <laughs> and then the college graduates maybe pursuing your, your careers now uh, or, or getting a job somewhere. He says, I sought to find meaning in my work. And this is what he has to say. Chapter 2, verse 18. I hated all my toil in which I toil under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to the man who will come after me. And who knows whether he will be wise or a fool. Yet he will be a master of all for which I toiled and used my wisdom under the sun. This also is vanity. He says, I'm working hard, and eventually, when I'm gone, it goes to somebody who didn't work for it. And they're, if they don't waste it, the next person will. He continues on in verse 22. He says, 
What has a man from all the toil and striving of heart with which he toils beneath the sun? For all his days are full of sorrow, and his work is a vexation. Even in the night his heart does not rest. This also is vanity. Okay, I'm not saying don't go and get a good education. I'm not saying don't go work hard and don't find things that, that, that give you enjoyment. But again, here he just keeps listing, you're not going to find meaning in those things. Again, death comes for us all and renders all the things that we built in this life meaningless. They pass on. He continues on in, in chapter 5. He mentions um, that he, he went after meaning maybe in wealth. Maybe wealth could satisfy him. And I love this verse, chapter 5, verse 10. You know, this is a good verse to remember. He says, he who loves money will not be satisfied with money, nor he who loves wealth with his income. This also is vanity. You know, he says, for anybody that loves to have money, you're never going to have enough. You're going to keep going after it. And, you know, the little bit that you make, you're going to want more. You're going to want more. You're going to want more. My dad once told me, you know, you spend what you make. It's going gonna, it's gonna to keep going out the door, going to keep going, and, and you will never be happy with the amount that you have, okay? Even if you are happy, so what? Again, death is going to come for you. It's going to ruin these, render these things meaningless. And here in this chapter is where we get that one famous passage. You know, he says, you know, naked I came into this world, naked I'm leaving, all right? I didn't bring anything with me. I'm not taking anything with me when I go, all right? So, what on earth can we find meaning in? You know, I'm speaking to you, to you graduates, but, but to everybody else as well. You know, we're, we're searching in this life, trying to move on to the next thing. What can we find meaning in? The, the next passage I want to take you guys to is in chapter 12. So to go ahead, turn with me to chapter 12. I know we're jumping around a lot, but we're covering a whole book. Um, in chapter 12, what he ultimately concludes after saying, you know, I sought after meaning in this thing, that thing, the other thing, and nothing did it for me. Nothing ultimately had meaning in it. He said, he says in chapter 12, remember also your creator in the days of your youth before the evil days come and the years draw near of which you will say, I have no pleasure in them. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened and the clouds return after the rain. He goes on this awesome, long, beautiful language of saying before all this happens, before, you know, the, the silver cord is snapped, the golden bowl, bowl is broken, you know, and before dust returns to the earth as it was, and the spirit returns to God who gave it vanity of vanity, says the preacher, all is vanity. Remember your creator is what he's saying. Skip ahead to verse 13. The end of the matter, after all has been heard, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every deed into judgment with every secret thing, whether good or evil. So, really the whole point of this is to say, if death ruins everything, then we need to find something that death cannot touch. We need to place our meaning and our hope in something that death can't affect. Okay, death ruins everything that we see here on this earth. It ruins all of us. What is something that death cannot touch? Death cannot touch my Jesus. That is the conclusion that he comes to. Death has no sway over God. Okay, Jesus Christ came to this earth, you know, very God of very God, born a human, lived this life, lived a perfect, sinless life, died on a cross, and I know what you might say, death touched him right there. That's not the end of the story. We all know it. When the time came, he defeated sin and death and conquered it, and he said, anybody who else, else who wants to defeat death, join me, follow me, make me your Lord and your Savior. In doing so, you will be given eternal life, everlasting meaning. Okay, we can chase after our work. We can chase after knowledge. We can chase after all these different things. But ultimately, the only thing that is going to last forever is our relationship with Jesus Christ. And that does not begin with dying and going to heaven. The Bible says this is eternal life, that they may know you. Again, that doesn't begin when we die. That begins here and now. So I'm not saying don't pursue all the things you want to pursue. I remember I had a conversation with one, one time with uh, one of our graduates. And um, 
And they were asking me, like, Barry, how do I know what to do with my life? You know, how do I know where, where God wants me to go? And ultimately, I concluded, like, I heard a pastor say one time, and I shared these words with her, you know, we can't always know, like, we can't always get these amazing messages from God saying, you know, go to this college, go to this job. That, that's not always going to be so clear. However, what we always know and what we are told to do is to live our life in a way that glorifies God. You may not know where God is sending you, but wherever you do go, take him with you. Live in relationship with him for all of your days because, again, you're going to college, you're going to your job, you're building your family, you're doing all these different things, great things, awesome things, but those things are not going to last. The only thing that will last is this relationship with Jesus that you start developing here and now. Again, go chase the things. Go do great things. But take Jesus with you because it won't matter if you don't. All right? And I want to reference back to the, those lists that I was talking about. All right? When you're making the list that ends up, you know, creating what is your life and showing all the things that you have done, I want to advise you, don't just put on the list relationship with Jesus, all right? Jesus is the heart of that list, all right? He is what you write the list on. He is the one who you write the list with. He is not some little accessory that you put on top of your life as though he were like a cherry on the top of ice cream. I heard a pastor say one time, Jesus has you and you have Jesus or you are barren and wasted and lost. It's all going to go away except for Jesus, Okay, very God of very God, Prince of Peace, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, place your trust in him, place, give your life to him, chase after him in all the things that you do. Graduates as you're pursuing the next stage, parents as you're raising your children, you know, all the things that you do, take Jesus with you and do it for him. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you now, your humble servants, sons and daughters. Lord, thank you so much for this time together. Thank you for the meaning and the value that can be brought to us through your son. Lord, I thank you for all these graduates. And God, I pray right now that, that you would fill in their hearts such a love for you, such a passion for you, that they, they wouldn't really see anything else, that they would have no choice but to make you their best friend and take, them, take you with them wherever they went, Lord. Please give them such a great obsession for you. Give, us, give it to us all, Lord. We all fall away at times. Father, please forgive us for our sins. Lord, we thank you that you do these things already. We praise your holy and precious name, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Uh, so at this time, we'll have our um, altar call. You know, if anybody would like to come up, pray here at our altars or um, things on your life that, that you need to get off or anything. You, if you want to talk to one of us, me and Pastor Jeff are up here. Love to speak with you guys. We'll wait for you.